what's up everyone i am luis from koenig wheels and we are back for another beautiful wheel wednesday podcast today scott is not here i am joined by max from koenig wheels Max from koenig wheels i'm here i made it I'm, <laughs> <laughs> thanks thank you uh luis for the nice introduction scott i uh, hope you're enjoying a nice week away in tennessee i'm just uh you know scrambling back and forth from this room to that room trying to run the podcast so uh so yeah, we'll do. I'll stay with you guys for about two to three minutes, and then we're gonna bring uh, Brian Wadman in, and uh, Luis and Brian are gonna chat. But uh, yeah, good to be here. But before we do that, we just want to do some maintenance work, just to let you know. Last Wednesday, we actually had a great podcast with our boy JG Pastor Jack, out of Grassroots Motorsports. Awesome. It's a very interesting dude, I man. I mean, he had a lot of. He has a lot of history in this game. You I know? like the so fact that he just walked up to Grassroots Motorsports 30 years ago or 32 yeah. years ago. It's like, you know, I'm going to work here. You guys yeah. might not have an opening, but I'll be in the parking lot. So, <laughs> But, you know, he's just one of those quintessential, like, just due to, you know, just loved cars and then got into it. And now, 30 years later, he's still with the same company. It's, years, it's, a, testament, yeah. it's a testament to Grassroots Motorsports and how they yeah. kind of maintain their, their staff and stuff like that. Well, so definitely go check out that podcast. It was a really interesting, dope one. That I'm sure uh, if you're a car dude or a car girl, you know, you'll definitely dig it, man. Uh, also, we did a video this last Friday that Max did a great job editing. Which it's editing? all about big brake oh, kits. Oh, right. Yeah. So if you have a big brake kit or uh, you're looking for a new set of wheels and you want it to fit around your big uh, brake kit that you already have, or maybe you have an uh, Evo that comes with like uh, really big Brembo brakes, something like that. It's a great video for you to watch just to... Uh, Scott kind of goes over all of the little technicalities, the little uh, little things you need to know and be aware of when fitting a big brake kit. So check that out on our YouTube channel. It's a pretty good one, pretty funny one, um, but but technical too. So check yeah. it out, learn a little bit, have a good time. I think I really like that one just because a lot of you guys always ask us questions in DMs and on Facebook and you know and on email about like uh, how how the the one thing that makes this video stand out from others is how the brick break template works. Oh right. And I think okay, they yeah. get to show you that in that Where video. You cut it out. It's the, the the scale of a perfect whatever brake you're looking at, whether it's Stop Tech or Brembo. Cut it out, print it out, put it right along the wheel. You can see, measure it right exactly. Know exactly if you're before you even buy the brake, it's gonna fit perfectly. So it's you definitely know what my favorite. My little fun fact of the week that I learned from Scott. Thank you, Scott. Uh, shout out, Scott. Um, is that uh, those brakes need 3.5 millimeters of clearance because uh, under that heat and pressure, those those brakes tend to expand, certain parts tend to expand. Um, but that's like kind of the main reason why you want that 3.5 millimeters of clearance to give uh, room for that little bit of expansion that might happen under heat. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. And but, and so make sure you go check that out. Now this Friday we're dropping another cool one where we do well. You guys, if you're here, you probably know about the car anatomies that we do. Basically, it's just a car walk around of uh, some of the builds that we've had relationships with or not, but you know we're fans of. And this Friday we're dropping one of Kelsey, Kelsey Rawlings that, that you get to see one. her 240 SX and kind of gives you a full walk around of that car. So make sure to check that and out. Actually, we've got a, we've got a uh, walk around of. Uh, guest today brian wadman coming out probably in the next couple of weeks um so you get to really see his build too my favorite part was that uh, magnuson supercharger um but yeah so we're about to bring brian wadman out here uh i'll have luis uh, run the intro and anything else we need to do in admin wise no that's it Anything's man good? yeah yeah that's okay, it cool. so so i'm gonna run into the other room and run the podcast we can make brian look real good with nice b-roll and he, he already makes himself look good on the track himself so let me go Push some buttons in the other room, but uh, yeah, thanks for having me, uh, Brian. Uh, we will talk to you. I'll, I'll talk to you soon, hopefully. But we take it away. Well, without further ado, we're going to introduce to you Formula Drift Pro Spec driver, the one and only Brian Wadman. What's up, Brian? What's going on, guys? How are you? What's up? What's up, my brother? How's everything going over there? Everything is good. Everything is good. A little quick vacation before getting back back home getting ready for the next round st louis i think you know that's one of the reasons why i'm a well and, and just you know i think brian is probably going to hear this the first time i'm a big fan of you is because you're one of the few drivers that i can tell uh you do this because you love it you know and i'm i'm sure that all of them do you know what i mean but there's a difference between like you have your whole you have a family life you have all these things going on but at the same time you're a freaking pro drifter man <laughs> you know and that's awesome i mean i think that's what all of us like that are car people want to do what you're doing man 
yeah, it's tough, but it's worth it if you're having fun. You know, that's the main thing, having fun and enjoying what you do, you know. It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of time. But if it's something you want to do, you do what you got to do to get out there. So I could talk to you about car things in and out. But the one thing that this podcast is about for me is exactly what the title is, is behind the wheel, who's behind the wheel. And one of the things that I wanted to kind of kind of get into you with is what was your interest, even though I've actually heard it in other podcasts that you've been on, what was your introduction into drifting? How did you get into the drift into drifting? So up in Connecticut, I was out kind of really in the sticks. You know, I was born in the Bronx, only lived there for a short time. I visit a lot, but uh, being out where I am, the car scene is not that big. And I was out and about. My family was just really starting with my youngest one. This was, you know, seven, eight years ago. He's 11 now, Evan. But I was out there and we were seeing what to do for the day. We seen a bunch of really nice trucks and cars and we followed them to a car show to a track that was close to my house called Lime Rock. Mm -hmm. And when we went in there and seen a car show, we seen a bunch of action going on. We walked over and that was when I first found out what drifting even was about seven years ago. They were doing a, a demo there for the big car show that was going on. So went in, talked to a bunch of people. It was actually a, a, a ready, set, drift demo. And everybody was really cool, open, talked to me about stuff. I didn't even know what an S14 or an S13 was. Got some info and I just was like, like, all right, I'll find a car and went and bought a car shortly after. And I was at the next event, seeing what was going down with it and learning what to do. So when it comes to like your first like build, like what was the first car that you actually got into and started work doing work with? It was a SR20 S13 hatch. Nice. Um, it was already caged. It was already just mild angle caged, you know, hydro not even dual caliper but was set up with a handbrake and everything and was a perfect car to get into i mean right away it was just kind of easy and fun to deal with all i had to do was fix what broke didn't really need to upgrade there was coils on it and everything else and just was able to get seat time so quickly went to go to events and just was grabbing any tires i could find and just getting a ton of seat time for cheap it was it was a blast so and now I, i'm if Correct me if I'm wrong. You started drifting around 2015, correct? Yeah, I had to be that about seven years ago. Yep. Now, as far as like, what was the what was the series that you started running in when it comes to like eventually getting into pro spec and pro well pro two? You got your pro two license, but how did that gradually? How'd you get there? You know what I mean? How, what what made you like? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Never even. You know, never was my dream or anything like that. I wasn't one of these kids that, you know, watched YouTube videos of it and stuff like that. I didn't even have an Instagram or anything, you know, it was all newer at that point. And I was just going to the events, having fun. I would find out through people, driving with people, oh, come to this event. I, I didn't even know it was another club close, you know, and wound up going up to Club Loose North because I heard about that. And then uh, Lebanon Valley, which is just a parking lot, but a fun place to go and, and run some doors. And eventually it got a little bit old, you know, um, just trying to find people to run with because I was getting a little more aggressive, never hit anybody or anything, but I would run close and people would get scared and get worried. And that was half the fun going like hard and avoiding the crash. You know, that's one of the fun things in drifting that I find. Um, so once once I was going to events and having trouble finding people to run with, I'm like, all right, what's next? You know, and I heard a couple people were going to these shootouts and stuff like that. So my first one was... Uh, it was one of the U.S. drift events at uh, VIR was one of the first ones I went to. And that thing got rained out. It was really tough. That's actually where that kid, Brandon Sorensen, got his license. Um, that's right. And that was the first shootout I went to. Uh, and that's what got my feet wet into like a competition type of thing. And, then, you know, after going to stuff like that, I found out, you know, you can go to these series, you can go to these shootouts, and that's the way you can earn your license. And that is... One of the biggest questions I get asked, no matter where I am, even when I'm at FD and FD fans or, you know, people that are just at an FD event come up, they're like, how do you get into this? And it's just, you know, you have to go to a shootout, you have to go to a licensing event or petition in, but it's getting even harder now for any of that type of stuff. I mean, there's a wait list now. It's, it's, we'll see what they do about it this year or next year about letting people in, you know, because they really capped it off last year. 
So and and this is one thing that I, I obviously you started with an S14. One of the things that I learned actually, uh, and you kind of were, you know, going to Club Blues is that you actually had a E46 that you were drifting in as well, correct? And, uh, is that E36? Yep. Oh, E36. That was, I'm uh, sorry. That was a uh, one JZ car. The one JZ. Yep, yep. Yep. E36. Yep. One J car. So to go to run through my cars real quick, the S13 hatch SR20 was my first car. And then I went out and bought the red car that I still run now. That's right. Yeah. For the fun events, which is an S14 LS. So I still have that one. After that one was the BMW uh, that you just talked about, yep. the 1J car. So at one point I had a uh, four cylinder, six cylinder, and an eight cylinder. And I would jump back and forth between each one of those cars. Um, the couple of the cars were getting pretty beat up because I don't wrench at all. Anybody that knows me knows that I don't wrench. I don't work on stuff. I have to pay people to get my cars in order and help me out. And if it wasn't for the people that helped me out, I wouldn't be able to do this, you know? So shout out to all the guys that have helped me along the way to get me where I'm at. You know, it's a, uh, it definitely takes a team to get where we are and to do the things that we do and to even be able to afford it. You know, do you still have the FCR, the, the RX seven? Do you still have that? I do. Yeah. I actually sold it. And then when I seen the kid, like it was having trouble again, I don't work on stuff. We wound up blowing the motor and, uh, I just had so many cars and I was trying to focus on my program and just keep kind of the same car. So I figured, let me put the money into the two S 14. So they're the same. I know the size of them and I can run the right line. Everybody's a hero in a parking lot and you could just jump in cars and do whatever you want. But if you really want to be able to run a line and stuff, you got to learn, you know, that certain car, you know, if you only have a certain amount of time, you want to be in the same type of car and really get a feel for that. But I sold that FC. And then when I seen it up for sale, um, I just had to have it back. So I did buy it back and that is in a stable till. Yeah. Still now. So, and, and this is one of the things that people don't know, probably, uh, if they, unless they, they followed your career, the, the S 14 that you run right now, it's actually Jeff Donati's build. Correct. Correct. Yep. That's a car I bought from him. Didn't really change anything. I just been keeping up on what it is. And, you know, we did a couple of little things. Um, Hot boy factory made me uh, some cooling ducts in the back that really helped keep the car cool. We've done a couple of little upgrades. Turbo Mike changed a few things with the steering and, and some other stuff just for, for ease of finding parts and stuff like that, instead of getting these specialized ones. And that's really helped out. Turbo Mike's a big person that really just points me in the right direction when needed, tunes my stuff, and he's right up in mass, so nice and close. He's part of uh, Dimitri's program and, in turn, is around me because that's, you know, still my teammate pretty much. We're, we're tight. We live close together and help each other out when we can and hang out when we're not uh, at the track, you know. So when he says Dimitri to the people who don't know, Dimitri Bruski is actually a really good friend of his. They actually had a team called Team Settle. I mean, uh, um, Team Never Settle, I apologize, that they were running together. Now, tell us a little bit about that relationship. Like, how does that even start, and how do you guys join, you know, join at the hip like that to, you know, to become a team? All right. So, again, just the same thing. We were we, we didn't know each other. We lived like an hour, just about an hour away from each other, and we were just going to local events, and we, our, our driving styles kind of matched up. You know, we, we both had multiple cars. We both just went out there and went hard. And we started driving together. I met him actually in that parking lot at Lebanon Valley. And then after that, we started driving more at Club Loose North together up in New Hampshire. And uh, yeah, you know, after that, we found out how close we were to each other and stuff like that. Both have kids the same age, both family men, both business owners. So, you know, just got a lot in common. And then we started going to these competitions and stuff like that together. He went into pro spec a little bit before me, which was called pro two back then mm -hmm. uh, a year or two before me and ran. And, you know, I just, again, wound up having fun at the competitions. I liked that it was a judged line and, you know, people were forced to drive with you and it was, you know, that, that next step for me to, to roll into for the competition. So it just, it just led me there and, then once we knew we were going to be traveling to us and we were close together, we wound up both jumping in uh, my truck. Cause I wound up buying a big rig just for close events. I thought it was like a three car garage. And it was... So I just scooped it instead of buying a truck and a trailer. And that was just like a dedicated rig I would use for local events. And then it worked out good for FD for the both of us to jump in. Hell yeah. 
So I think one of the cool things that I got to see from you is, and Max will agree with me if he was here, because he, we got to see you at Formula Drift New Jersey, man, and you were just ripping, my dude. Like, you were killing it on that track, and to the <laughs> point where now you're on top 10, man. You're, you're in the top 10 right now, and that's one of the things I love about Pro Spec is, like, you can go from top 10 to winning this event. So the question that I want to ask you is, what are we looking for when it comes to these upcoming rounds, when it comes to uh, Brian Wadman, man? Hold, hold on, Brian, before you answer that, okay, I was just saying sure. to him and Scott the other day, I was like, you know, every time I've seen Brian Wadman on the track or in a video, he's always just ripping it, like, yeah. like holding that clean line, just like full send. Yeah, no, favorite driver. Yeah, yeah. Had to pop in there for that. So, so. I appreciate that. <laughs> but yeah, what, what can we expect from, from Brian so this, this year? Well, just to touch on what you guys were just saying, it kind of hurts and it kind of helps because I just run that wide line. I like that party line. I go out there and I always kind of run my same line and I don't mix it up like these other guys. So sometimes people can get right on me because of it. But, uh, you know, that's kind of what it's about. And that's what they say in a driver's meeting and stuff like that. So that's what I try to do. And, uh, you know, looking forward to these next couple of rounds, it's keeping this car straight, keeping this car right, because that's, that's my biggest downfall because I don't wrench. Uh, the car doesn't get the work it needs to get done sometimes and or the parts sometimes. So that's my biggest thing. And then also, uh, you know, just this last round, everything was good. And I did qualify, uh, what was it? 10th or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, qualified 10th and then went out, won my top 32 battle. And as we were warming up, I went really hard in a chase because that's one thing I didn't get a lot of practice with. So I went real hard in a chase and too hard, and that's what took myself out. We couldn't get the car back together for my top 16 battle. So took myself out in Jersey, didn't give myself a shot to actually battle, took myself out in practice, which was pretty uh, pretty dumb. But, you know, that's the risk we take when we're going as hard as we can. Yeah, Guy sure. in front of me slowed down a bit too much. I wasn't ready for it, and I hit the wrong pedal a little bit too long, and that was a wrap. So worst worst hit of my career. Car didn't get it too bad at all. Just a couple knuckles and stuff like that, but just a little bit too much to fix real quick. So next round was actually is going to be St. Louis, and that was my most fun FD event, my first one I ever went to. The car was running perfect. My line was good. I, I got up into top eight then, and uh, we hope to do even better than that this time. Yeah, man. I think that's one of the, the reasons why I love to watch you the most, man, because – and why I love to see pro spec in a sense. And I've, I've mentioned this before in other uh, interviews that I've done with other pro spec drivers is the fact that a lot of you guys are just going out there and doing the damn thing and then coming out with like, you know – like, for for example, yourself, man. You're a top 10. And honestly, dude, if if, if you turn it up in these last the ne these next couple rounds, I could see you getting that carbon, man. It's just it's just the way that that the prospect works, man. It's, it's possible. Yeah, man. But all right, so no let, me doubt. In, let me get into this. So, what does the future for Waterman Drift look like? Do you have aspirations for pro, or is it just something where you want to kind of stick it at prospect? What does that look like for you? It really all depends, you know. Pro would be great. Uh, but that's, you know, it, people don't realize it's twice the money and yeah. three times the time and effort to put in, you know, eight rounds mixed up all over the U.S. I mean, that's that's a huge commitment, um, you know, having a family, having a couple of businesses myself that, you know, need work at this point right now. Everybody's kind of hurting with this economy. So, you know, the trades are starting to see that a bit because everything's so much. Nobody can even afford the necessities. So, you know. I'm going to have to focus some more on that. But, you know, my main thing is just have fun. I want to do some more. I want to do like grid life. I want to do, you know, those events. Uh, I'll be at that LZ party coming up soon down there uh, in Jersey. So that'll be sweet. You know, those, those events are real fun. Interacting with the fans. I love giving ride alongs, um, introducing new people into the sport, you know, that come and spectate and watch and help and, you know, just all that, whatever, you know, but, uh, Prospect is fun. I can see myself in another year of prospect, definitely for next year. Um, you know, and just see where it takes us. Hell yeah. Well, so, and that leads us to my next question. Uh, when you're not drifting, what does life look like for Brian Wadman? Life is good, man. I'll tell you that. Um, I you know you mentioned you, you have a few a businesses and stuff like that as well. Yeah. So my main business I started uh, over 15 years ago was a roofing business. And I, I literally started it out of a back of a Honda Accord. That was the car I had. And, uh, I was doing a little bit of landscaping, tile work and stuff like that. And 
when I started working for this guy doing roofing and stuff like that, people said, oh, oh you know, could you do my roof? And they were smaller ones, easy ones. I started with that and then just worked it up from the ground. Um, so definitely self-made. And over about five years ago, we started an energy business delivering heating oil and propane oh, up nice. here in this area of Connecticut. So that's that's one of my other businesses. And I have a partner in that business, a business partner there. So yep those are my two businesses and then like i said my family is getting super involved with uh baseball for my son evan hey. and my girl avery does competitive competitive cheer so very cool man super that's, busy with them that's very cool so the last thing that we want to do with you brian is we actually had some questions that came in for you so we'll uh give you those questions sure and then we can get you back to your vacation my man <laughs> all right sounds all right. good
actually known you for like at least had conversations with you for at least a good solid four years, which is crazy to even think about. But um, oh no no wait I don't know, time no flies. no no. I would say two years actually, because the first time that we started talking was around 2020 uh, when we started working with you. So uh, just to see your evolution and see you getting better every day. I mean, every time I, I see you on track, it's just an inspiration for me because one of the things that, that like uh, we've been talking about is me trying to get into on track. And I'm always fearful to do it because of the cost of money and things like that. But I think seeing what you have done and how you've gotten there is an inspiration for me. So I really appreciate that, man. Have you driven yet? Have you been out there? So not drifting. So I, I'm my thing is is as I'm thinking about starting with autocross and then eventually seeing where it takes me. But that's my biggest fear, man. Is it's kind of the cost of things. But like everybody here tells me, man, it's just one of those things that if you love it, you do it, and then eventually you get caught, you catch the bug, and you're all of a sudden now you're you're somewhere where you didn't expect you would be when it comes to racing or anything in that yeah. capacity. Go talk to Reese. Go talk to Reese at the drift school. Go talk to Reese and PA at the drift school. Get a, get a day in over there. Check it out. Yeah, for sure. That's, I definitely got to do that too, man. But but yeah, again, thank you again, Brian, for, for joining us. And uh, we'll see you at the next one, man. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Is there anything that you want us to plug? Oh, follow him at uh, what's, what's the Instagram? Wadman underscore drift. Wadman Drift, yeah, Wadman underscore Drift, yeah. YouTube, Wadman Drift, I put some stuff up there too. Um, I got a Facebook page too, Wadman Drift, same thing. So yeah, definitely there. Swivel Mount will be a little more involved, I think, putting out a lot of videos. That's the mount that goes on top of the car for all the good action videos left to right that moves with the cars. So check out Swivel Mount and uh, yeah. All right, there it is. All right, Brian, thank you so much. Enjoy Cape Cod and we'll see you soon. I appreciate it. Later. Later Thank man. you. All right. See, yeah, man, I think, I think, you know, that's one of the reasons why I appreciate having gentlemen like Brian Wadman on the podcast, just because uh, my man is like, uh, you know, one of those people that picked that, that, that saw something that he liked, picked it up and then became excellent at it. And I think that's one of the reasons why I want to kind of figure it out. And uh, on my capacity as some of you guys who have been on the podcast with us, uh, have noticed that like, you know, I've been trying to kind of figure out what I'm going to do with the Fiesta and stuff like that. So I'm appreciative to have a uh, gentleman like Brian on and talking about his journey. And I hope you guys appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, again, thank you for joining us for another uh, Behind the Wheel podcast. We wish you the best and uh, make sure to join us here every Wednesday, man. I'm Luis. Peace.